Yes. Oh, great. Yes. <laughs> this is going to be great. Are we, are we ready? Oh, fuck. I feel like I'm dizzy. I'm dizzy. <laughs> Does the sound work? <laughs> you can hear us. Fuck. Welcome back to Lexi's Lounge. <laughs> nervous this is our first live in person like guest podcast besides my dad but like mm-hmm. actual in the lounge so yeah for the occasion i'm super excited to be here oh yes um can you tell them your name <laughs> oh hello <laughs> i'm Mackenzie. and what do you do Mackenzie? i do a lot of things i wear many hats but <laughs> what's your favorite hat Ooh, my favorite hat would have to be like the creative side of like marketing within people's businesses. So long story short, I started out in the lash world and I grew to love helping other people feel more confident in themselves and their businesses. And so I branched out into training and coaching. And so that's what's been really fun for me to help people kind of solidify their vision and get excited about really just stepping into their power of being themselves. And so that's been really fun. That's very powerful. And to that, we're gonna... Fuck. I'm sure this is really good content. Great content. The fact. <laughs> oh my gosh. Normally I feel like they pop right off. Oh, like normally because you... I wasn't standing. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> it's down my sleeve. Hold on. We are doing, uh, we're actually in the lounge. We are in Lexi's lounge. Mackenzie is somebody who is very aspirational in her space. I'm super excited for her to be here because of everything that she's accomplished, the way she helps women in their industry. And like she said, shed, like she said, <laughs> making them feel confident with who they are. I mean, that's literally everything. Let's just fill this up a little more. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, for I it. got some orange juice. Don't you oh, worry. I honey. love it. And I have a little surprise. A little surprise. A little surprise. Ooh. Ooh. I do like surprises. You do? Mm-hmm. I hate it. I'm like one of the only people I feel like that actually genuinely like surprises. Like even with subscription box, like, you know how sometimes people will like share what's in the box. I'm like, I don't want to know. Really? Like I need to wait and I need to see what it is for myself. So would you say that patience is a virtue for you? Oh, I'm probably too patient with a lot of things, but yeah. How do you get more patient? patient. Not let little things bother you or not, or I feel like for me, it came down to understanding, okay, is this in my control? And if something wasn't in my control, there was nothing I could do about it. And so me being frustrated about it or being impatient or wanting things to be happening faster, it wasn't something that it wasn't an emotion that I could sit with and change anything. So I was just sitting there being angry for no reason. Yeah. And I feel like that helped me. Well, and how many of us do that? Like something so stupid and we're like, can you believe that Susie, that she posted that on her Instagram story? Cheers. (laughs) Cheers. Mm. Mm. I got my tonsils out. Um, a week ago, yesterday, no, two days ago. Oh, what day is it? It's Thursday. I wouldn't even be able to tell you. Really? Mm-mm. I like never know what day it is. And it is kind of hard to keep track, you know. Um, I got them out. So if you ever hear like, like that kind of talk, that's, that's really what's going on. Um, so Mackenzie is, um, I mean, we, uh, this seems to be a theme lately. I bring people on the podcast. I have no idea what we're going to be talking about. I'm just kind of like free ball in it for lack of a better word so um Mackenzie yeah tell us about your craziest experience with a client ever like she used to do lashes oh, full time I have a couple that come to okay, mind okay let's hear them one of them scared me so bad it was like Okay. So it must've been within the first two months of me lashing. I had a new client come in. She fell asleep doing her full set, which was awesome because I loved working on people when they were asleep because I could work a little bit faster. And I got done and she was like dead asleep. 
And so like, I looked like dead. <laughs> no. I looked at everyone. I was like, okay, so she's breathing. And I like nudged her a little bit. And I was like, Barbara, like – we're done. She flails her arms, like almost hitting me and is like, where the hell am I? And it was like freaking out. So needless to say, I was terrified anytime somebody else fell asleep because I was worried I was going to get hit. And then another time I actually dropped a tweezer on a client and it woke her up. She was like asleep. in their eyeball, not in their eyeball. <sighs> I dropped it, but it hit her nose. Like it like grazed her nose. So it like gave her a little scrape. And I was like, I am so sorry. And I was still so new. I felt horrible. And she was so nice. She was, she was like, don't worry about it. It's okay. Like it happens. How many times do we do that though? Where we're like, this is like an end my career. And people are like, no, I, I just, whatever. Like it, it just is what it is. It was mm -hmm. an accident. It's not like you maliciously scraped my face. <laughs> and she kept coming back to me and we had like an awesome relationship. And she was telling me about her son's girlfriend who she didn't like and like all this stuff. So I like loved her. She was awesome. Oh my gosh. Was she like one of those ladies who are like, I want you to be my mother-in-law. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Exactly. She was like, I just want him to be happy, but she's just boring. I was like, ooh, we don't like boring people. Mm. You're like, your son's not cute, but I'll <laughs> I'll marry him for you. <laughs> I think she I think he was like in high school too. And at that point I was like 21 or something. I mean, cougars. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you I mean possibly. You never, you never know. Yeah, you never know. I mean, some people like dated people who were like 30 years older than them. Like the thing I can't wrap my mind around is when somebody dates an older man like 30 years older. I'm like, he was literally 30 when you were born. Mm -hmm. I mean, you do you, you do your thing. But I'm like, th that frame of mind, I'm like, that's what I can't get over. Mm -hmm. But I mean, who, who knows? I don't think I could do it. I don't think I could get over that either. I feel like I would, I just don't think I would be attracted to someone that much older. I mean, at what age does the, the Peter Robinson stop working? I have no idea. <laughs> Is there an age where that's like a thing? That's a very good question. Should we Google it? We could Google it. I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too lazy. My thumbs aren't working right now. <laughs> okay, so what's your other story? My or other was that, or just that was the, the other oh, story, no, dropping the, the tweezer. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. So have you ever had a client yeah. who's gotten up after you did their lashes and be like, I hate this? There have been clients who have like expressed – that they wanted a really natural set and they they were worried their husband was going to think it was too full or too dramatic and they didn't want them to look crazy. And so I went into it and I was like, this is going to be perfect. Like I can nail this set. I'm so excited about this. And they'd wake up and they would look in the mirror and go, um, I, I just don't think they're that full. I don't think they're you know, as long or as dramatic as I wanted. And I'm like, were you there for our conversation? I'm just confused now. <laughs> dramatic was not a keyword. <laughs> no. <laughs> that was used. I was like, all right. Like, I love dramatic full sets. Mm -hmm. I was like, all right, I'll rein it in and we won't be crazy with it and it'll be fine. And then I ended up having to have them lay back down and like remove some so I could put bigger lashes in there to give that illusion of more fullness. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so... There have been a couple times like that or on the flip side too where they told me that it was too dramatic and they'd have to lay back down and I'd have to remove lashes to make them look more natural. So how do you do that when you have like a full day of clients booked? Like because that your regular set takes like two, two and a half, three mm -hmm. hours sometimes. Yeah. So sometimes it was like I'd have to text the following client and say, can you come in 15 to 20 minutes later? Like I'm running a little bit behind. And I developed such a good relationship with all of my clients when I was lashing full time that nobody ever said, I need to come right at this time. They were all super flexible with me. And I really appreciated that because I was also flexible with them and that helped. But yeah, it's like soul crushing when you get that. They look in the mirror and that reaction, you're like, oh, you're like, uh, I thought that, I, I thought that was not <laughs> what I was expecting. And so that was really hard sometimes. But I mean, ultimately, at the end of the day, I had to remove my own feelings and my own emotions mm -hmm. out of it and look at it and understand, okay, they're paying for a service. And I do genuinely want to make sure that they're happy. And so I'm going to do everything I can 
to do that. Yeah. Even if it meant being frustrated and stressed about running into the next appointment. And that was another thing I was like, I had to, I had to learn to be patient with myself and other people's feelings because I realized, okay, worst case scenario, my next client's a little upset, but they're still going to get their service done and they're still going to get the full time I promised them because I'll move everyone else afterwards. And Mm -hmm. because it wasn't something that I was consistently doing, I looked at it and I thought, okay, I'm not doing this every time to every single appointment. Mm -hmm. And if they can be a little bit flexible with me and understanding with me, then they're a perfect client. It's a good fit. Yeah. And you know, what's really cool too, is when you do face those people from a PR standpoint, I guess, Mm -hmm. when you do face those people who are maybe less than happy with their service or they write you a shit review or they're just like unhappy in general, that's really the opportunity that we have as like business owners to really go above and beyond and wow. And I think a lot of people get afraid of that because ego gets involved and they're like, well, like they, they make it an identity type thing. They're like, if you don't like my lashes that I put on you, then that's a personal problem. When instead it's like, they genuinely don't like them. So what can I do as a business owner, as somebody who doesn't want to see people be upset, see people like have the opportunity to like change and Mm -hmm. be better and like improvise. And I mean, I feel like if you always look at those opportunities as a lesson and a way for you to grow in your business, then there's no way that you're not going to be successful, whatever that looks like to you. Mm -hmm. Totally. And I think it was a huge learning experience for me to understand, hey, I can use this as constructive criticism and moving forward, I can have that conversation with the client before they even lay down. Mm -hmm. So they know we can adjust anything. And because there were other instances where clients would come back, you know, at their film and they would say, yeah, I thought they were a little too full or I thought they were a little too long and I was uncomfortable for two weeks. And at that point, that also made me look at, okay, maybe I should be reaching out to them and asking. And one of my girls, um, Diana, who's been with me for almost three years now, a little, yeah, almost three years. She has taken the initiative to reach out to clients a couple of days after just to see how they're doing. And I was like, you are brilliant. Like, I don't know why I never thought. And I think too, we get busy, but Mm -hmm. if you can create that experience and you can create that environment for your clients to feel so comfortable it's just going to make a world of a difference in your business and it's going to, you're going to get better reviews. You're going to get people wanting to refer you to more people because it shows that you're taking the extra mile to make sure that you want your business to run the way that you want it to. You want your name to be, you know, synonymous with quality Uh and luxury. And if you want that, you have to take that extra step and do those things. A hundred percent. And client experience is something I feel like people don't really put on at the forefront of their business. I feel like it's, everybody's talking about sales. Everybody's talking about, oh, how am I going to get my next client? How am I going to get a high ticket retainer client? How am I going to get this person? Like we're, I feel like a lot of business owners are really looking for volume mm-hmm. lashes <laughs> <laughs> rather than just like, uh, uh, in my, in my belief is that the sale starts after they hit purchase now or buy now mm-hmm. or whatever whatever mm-hmm. your call to action button says. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. I mean, like having an onboarding process is insane. And I know when we started working together, I did mm-hmm. not have one. <laughs> but I mean, that's that's what I learned. Like mm-hmm. I felt like for so long in my business, I was so scatterbrained. Like mm-hmm. I feel like I saw this quote, the other, or not quote, but it was like a graphic the other day of the first year in your business, it's like spaghetti. Like it literally looks like a yarn ball. Mm -hmm. And then the rest of your business, like when you're starting to scale is like unraveling Mm -hmm. that yarn ball and making it into something beautiful. Like you start crocheting or something like you bring in different tools, but the experience is something that we need to start focusing on. I love that. Right. Mm -hmm, Absolutely. Well, and I think to your point of people keep looking for that volume or that next sale, a lot of coaching clients that I work with come to me and they're like, I'm not fully booked. I need to sell, you know, I want a hundred people in this next course or I want this, that, and the other. And if you're so stuck on those numbers, you can't get in that. And the way I look at it, you can't get in that energy of actually connecting with people and being excited about those people who have signed up. Mm -hmm. I relate it to like one time I was hoping for 
you know, five students to sign up that month for one-on-one coaching calls. I think I had three people sign up. And instead of focusing on the, oh my gosh, I I wanted two more. Mm -hmm. I was like, I have three people ready and excited to like have that energy exchange or that hour where I can like give that little bit of inspiration to them or I can, you know, share one little nugget of something that can make a difference in their life or their business. And like, those are three people that I get to pour into and be excited about and be excited for. Yeah. Instead of sitting there like, I I wanted two more people. Like focus Mm -hmm. on what you do have and it's going to come to you so much more. Gratitude, my friends. Gratitude. I feel Mm -hmm. like we are not grateful enough for the things that we already have. And I, I mean, like, I don't know all about like the mindset law of attraction. You probably know a little bit better about that, but how does gratitude work? Like when you're already grateful for what you have, how does that open you up for even more? I think I'll talk from my perspective. I've read a lot of different books, listened to a lot of different podcasts about the law of attraction and just literally just your mindset. And it taught, and a lot of what I've heard has talked about what you're, what is going on in your mind, your thoughts, your feelings is going to reflect what's happening in your outside world. Mm-hmm. And so I experienced this myself. I dealt with daily panic attacks for almost two years. I had horrible anxiety. I wouldn't leave the house because I was afraid I was going to die. I was afraid everyone around me was going to die. And I have no idea where these fears came from. It just all of a sudden. And I realized I was speaking to myself negatively all day. I was looking at what I didn't have Mm -hmm. all day day. And because that was what I was focusing on, that's the only thing I saw. And so when I started to read these books and I started to get into that shifting my mindset into being grateful for what I do have, being grateful for, you know, those feelings, because it's telling me that my body wants to keep me alive. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm anxious because Um, You know, when we think of primal times, you had that fight or flight response. Every day, all day. the people (laughs) who were more anxious stayed alive because they were alert and they were aware of their surroundings. So we should be anxious all the time. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just kidding. (laughs) No, exactly. But yeah, so I started to look at it like, oh, this is my body. This is my brain trying to protect me. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not meant to live this life feeling like this every single day. Yeah. And so I started to talk to myself differently. A friend of mine told me to stand in the mirror and smile at myself and then start laughing at myself. (laughs) So I would literally stand in the mirror and I would smile as big as I could at the mirror. And I would look and I would start laughing and it was odd. It would pull me out of whatever negative or whatever like issues I was going through. Really? Just that that easily? Just that. And um, I was reading, I'm reading a book. Uh, the High Five Habit by Mel Robbins. I'm listening. I'm going to go with my dog. <laughs> and so she's talking about, um, you know, high-fiving yourself in the mirror and how – because a high five is going to be that positive reinforcement because psychologically we've grown up knowing a high five to be positive, to be encouragement, to be something that, you know, there's no negative – there's no negativity around a high five. And so if you can do that to yourself in the mirror, it's like you're literally giving yourself a high five and it can pull you out of that. And so not only every morning do I smile at myself in the mirror, I laugh at myself in the mirror. I now high five myself in the mirror. For anybody who's like not on any kind of journey like that, they're probably like, you're a fucking psycho. (laughs) You're insane. But it works. Mm -hmm. No, it totally works. And so basically breaking it down to the moment I started to be grateful for, even though I hated feeling that way, I hated feeling like I was going to die if I left the house or whatever. I started to be grateful because I started to look inward and try and figure out, okay, where is this coming from? Where is this stemming from? And how can I be grateful for this moment right now? And my mom really helped me with that because she said, Kenzie, like you're going through this and it sucks right now but Mm -hmm. you might help someone five years from now 10 years from now that's going through the same thing this might be something that you can relate to somebody else on and it might be huge because like not a not necessarily I feel like a lot of people can relate to having anxiety and panic attacks Mm -hmm. 
But at that time, I didn't talk about that with anybody. I I didn't other than my immediate family. Yeah. And I felt I literally felt insane. And so I was like, if I have to smile at myself in the mirror and I have to laugh at myself in the mirror, I'm going to try it because I'm tired of feeling this way. Yeah. And when I started feeling grateful for things, all I saw was opportunities. All I saw was new connections. All I saw was other ways for me to start to learn about myself, start to learn about how I could pull myself out of that. And my, I, to be dramatic, my whole life changed. I knock on wood, haven't had a panic attack in a very long time. And I used to be on a daily pill because I was so worried that I was going to have a heart attack. What? Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. I was terrified that I was going to have a heart attack. Did you have like heart problems running your family or something? No, not heart problems running in my family. But when I was 14, I fainted and I cracked open the back of my head. So I had to get a bunch of staples and everything. Mm -hmm. I know. Yeah. Those are some fun pictures. My head hurts thinking about that. So (laughs) could not be a nurse or doctor. No, I could never, never. So, uh, Uh, but yeah, they, for some reason, one of the doctors said, oh, it might be her heart. Like she may have had some arrhythmia, whatever. I feel like that's it. That I have heart her problems faint. now. <laughs> yes, exactly. So I have worn a heart monitor every single year since I've been like 14 because I'll have, I go through these waves of like, I will have like a lot of anxiety mm-hmm. and I'm like, oh, my heart, like something's going on. And this past year was the first year that I realized like, I don't, it's not my heart. Like nothing's wrong with my heart. No one has ever said, this is what it is. Like, this is what we see. It's just, I go through these upswings of having high anxiety, Uh but high functioning anxiety now. Mm -hmm. And so I've just come to the conclusion like, oh, it's just me being anxious and that's okay. And so it's really subsided after that kind of realization. But what you said right there, Mm -hmm. it's okay. Mm -hmm. It's anxiety and that's okay. Right. Because I think yeah. so many people, what they do is they're like, I'm, I can't be anxious. I'm not supposed to be anxious. Anxious is bad. Anxious equals bad. Depressed equals bad. Anything with like a mental health that was used mm-hmm. to be stigmatized as like a mental illness, it's bad. Mm-hmm. Anything you have to go to the doctor for and get p- bad, 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 bad. When it's like, right. it's just part of the human experience. Mm-hmm. I mean, like we all have something. Totally. Everybody has something. And to your point earlier, what really caught my ear <laughs> is um when you were talking about how like I'm having these experiences and I can share them and help people I think that is a huge part of the human experience and I know like not to make this about me but yeah. back in the day when I would I didn't have a work Instagram or anything I would post like things on my personal Instagram that was like people were like oh my god Lexi's like an over sharer <laughs> and mm-hmm. realistically like everything I was sharing was something that I'd learned anything mm-hmm. that like I've gone through And now I look back and I'm like, well, yeah, if it helped one person, why not? Why not? And Mm -hmm. every single time I shared something that was very vulnerable, very like putting myself out there that even if people, nobody responded like publicly, I had so many DMs Uh every time of people being like, thank you so much. Or like my Mm -hmm. family went through this or this or that or the other thing. So I think that's like a huge thing. I hope that you take away listening or watching this podcast Mm -hmm. is like, what you have gone through is on purpose. Nothing is a coincidence. And if you've gone through it, somebody else has too, but maybe they haven't talked about it, but you never know until you put yourself out there and you share it Mm -hmm. for other people. Absolutely. And I I think it's those connections that really get people to fall in love with who you are. And like, Mm -hmm. and I feel like too, like, obviously not only just as a person, but in business, that might be that tipping point that makes somebody want to book that coaching call with you or make somebody want to buy that course because they can relate to you and they see you as someone that they want to be like. And I think totally, I did the same thing. I would share stuff personally on my personal page and I immediately felt like, oh, like I just feel weird for doing Mm -hmm. this. And then when I went to my business page, I was like, these are people who have no idea who I am. Uh And like, it just felt better. But, and that's still something I'm trying to get out of and grow out of feeling weird about posting stuff on my personal page or like people you grew up with, because ultimately it comes down to, you are not the same person you were in high school. You are not the same person you were in middle school. Can we have this conversation? That there is this mental box that every single one of us is in. And like, 
it's something that people aren't talking about, so I'm glad that we're talking about it right now, but it's the fact that who you were as a middle schooler, as a child, as an adult, like your, your teenage bitchy high school self, like I feel like when we graduate high school and we have all of our colleagues and not colleagues, all of our, <laughs> our classmates yeah. from high school, like on our Instagram, on our social media, I feel like we subconsciously put ourselves in this box where we're like, well, because I was rude to Susie once, now I have to kind of keep up this, like, I'm kind of rude mentality, mm -hmm. you know, when realistically we all change and we all evolve. And if you like give yourself the time and the opportunity to learn from moments where you're not as proud of yourself, mm -hmm. then you really do start evolving. And so I had the exact same experience as you when mm -hmm. I went on Instagram as a business owner and I started a new company and a new page. I didn't even, I don't even think I told many people that I was doing it. People started finding me and I was like, oh fuck, fuck. Now I started feeling like I had to act a certain way mm -hmm. because that's how they knew me in person. That's how they remember me. Right. right? So like mm -hmm. I kind of have to be rude because I was not nice in high school. I was projecting a lot of my bullshit onto other people. But now that I realize that I'm like, I just have to be myself. And, but, it, but it's such a hard thing because you have like, it's such a mind fuck being like, I'm a hundred percent positive that Sophie, Susie and Sally all think of me one way. So I, I kind of feel like I have to be that way. Have you ever felt like that? Mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah. I felt like there's been things that I've like said before or subscribed to before that I don't subscribe to now. And I think that's a huge thing of like, and to back up you even acknowledging that you're like, oh, those were my projections, like my own bullshit that I was dealing with that I was putting onto other people or assuming their perception of me. Mm -hmm. And I think it comes down to we are all our own main character in our life. And so oh, that's when freeing. we're <laughs> – when we're think like I'm the star of my life. You're the star of your life. Mm -hmm. So I go into a party and I think, oh, my hair like doesn't look the way I wanted it to. Sally's also thinking, oh, I should have worn those other boots. Susie's thinking, oh, I really don't like what I dressed myself in. She's probably thinking that I look crazy. She probably doesn't like my dress. I'm thinking she probably doesn't like my hair. Nobody's thinking about you. And if they're thinking about you, they do not have enough going on in their life. They mm -hmm. don't have enough going on in their life to be busy enough with their aspirations, what they want to do and their visions. And if you can come to that realization sooner it's going to be so much easier for you to be like, I don't give a shit what Susie, Sally, and Sarah thinks. Right. Because I'm going to do what I want to do and I'm going to be myself because it's so hard trying to be somebody else. It's so hard trying to be – like I can't be professional. <laughs> I can't – No, no, no. I can be no. – I, I can be professional. But in a way that like I still have to be casual in the sense yes. of like I need to be a Approachable. I can't be this. I don't write in a way that's super formal. Formal is a better word, probably. Yeah. I'm not formal. I can't do it. I have to be me. I have to be normal. I have to, or I hate, okay. Gotta say fuck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and to backtrack with that, I hate saying normal because my normal is not your normal. And I can create whatever I want my normal to be. Right. And I feel like that's something too that really bums me out about a lot of people's perceptions and perspectives on things is they think it should be a certain way there's right versus wrong is literally subjective absolutely and it's it's tailored to who your parents were who your grandparents were what your what family generational patterns have been taken down mm -hmm. what happened to you in your childhood your lived experiences traumas you've had whether it's big t or small t like every single thing that has happened to you in your life has happened for a reason and it shapes the person you are even mm -hmm. that guy that pulled out in front of you and that you're all upset about still like right. why did that happen why are you still mm -hmm. upset about it like you know totally. like everything our lives are like these huge puzzles and mm -hmm. it's so interesting figuring out like what life is going to look like in like mm -hmm. 10, 15, 20 years. Yeah. But there's so many people who continue to stay in the same place that they've been in for decades. And that literally breaks my heart. Me too. Especially to thinking about it. Like I 
obviously look at myself. I have my own experience to what that I've learned from and that I can share about. But I, I look at other people that I've seen complain about a situation that I've been in or that they've been in and they're complaining about it, complaining about it, complaining about it, complaining about it. So what are you going to do about it? <laughs> and I look at it in a sense of if I were them, I would do X, Y, Z, mm-hmm. but I'm not them. They have to make their own choices and their own decisions. And I try to take that to heart and take that seriously because I notice myself getting in those patterns and complaining about certain things or thinking I should be doing something differently. And then I sit back and I think, well, why not? Why, why aren't I? And then that's my, <laughs> I told my assistant, I think I told you this. I said, if I complain about this one more time, you need to slap me <laughs> because I'm not allowed to complain about it if I'm not willing to take action to change the situation that I'm in. Amen. I mean, how freeing is that though? Mm-hmm. The thing that I, I think has been the biggest realization to a lot of people in the last, I, I would say like three years And I want to say a lot of it came from the holistic psychologist coming online and being like, you can literally rewire your life. Mm -hmm. You can reparent yourself. Mm -hmm. But is the understanding that you are 100% in control of your whole life. Like if your life sucks, I'm sorry. It like, that's a perception Mm -hmm. and you can, you can choose to look at all of the bad things that have happened to you. What's going on in your life right now? Like, Yes, bad things happen. I mean, we cannot stop it, but Mm -hmm. it's really the lens you choose to look at your life through. You can harp on the, you can meditate on the negative or the positive. You can find the positive. You can find the lesson in literally anything. But that goes to say, like, you can literally make your life whatever you want to make it. Like, Mm -hmm. even if you were, you know, thrown in a dumpster as a child and you were in the adoptive care system like your whole life and you were just like a victim to the system for your first Mm -hmm. 18 years, that does not mean your life is over. Mm -mm. You know, there's so many different things that you can do to start taking at least steps to create a life that you like. Like we have one life and it's so, so sad how many people choose to stay a victim to the Mm -hmm. circumstances of life because Mm -hmm. that's the easy way out. What's hard is saying, you know what? Yes, this shit happened to me and it was really fucking hard and I hated it and it was the darkest time of my life, but here's what I learned from it and here's what I'm going to change in my life and here's where I'm going to go now and this is what I'm never going to do again and this is what I'm going to do differently and this is how I'm going to teach other people not to be the same in the same position that I was. Mm Mm-hmm. Here's my TED talk. <laughs> <laughs> I know I love it. Well, especially too, like when you break it down, people look at where they're at and they look at where they want to go and they think that's a long fucking ways away from mm-hmm. where I want to be. So why, why, like, why try? Why try? It's a long way. But if you can start taking those small steps, and that's a problem, people think I got to do it all at once. Mm-mm. No, you don't. You got to enjoy the journey. Mm, Yes. It's a, it literally is a Mm -hmm. lifelong journey because ultimately when you come down to it, when you get to where you want to go, well, there's a bigger mountain that you want to climb now Yeah, and you have to enjoy the process. Otherwise you're going to be let down because most of us don't celebrate our wins. No, we get to that goal and we're like, all right, well, what's next? Cool. And I, I feel like that's something for me. I've had to step back and say, you know what? No, like, I need to celebrate this. I need to be excited for myself. I need to let myself feel these happy feelings and feel overwhelmed by how far I have come. Yes. And then 24 hours, give myself 24 hours to celebrate and then sit back and look at it and say, okay, now I can start thinking about that next thing. Mm -hmm. And not a lot of people do that. I think, honestly, one of the best things that you can do if you're like, you know what? I have this huge goal, but it seems really unattainable. So mine's like a $4 million house in Scottsdale. Gary V's is buying the Jets, right? Mm -hmm. I know that I can figure out how to buy a $4 million house house in Scottsdale and keep this house Mm -hmm. that we're recording in, which is also an Airbnb, Woodlands PNW on Airbnb. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) But I know that I can do it. Right. But I know that I can't do it next year or, well, who Why knows? Not? Who yeah. knows? Why, why couldn't yeah. I? 
I could, but mm-hmm. it's a matter of figuring out how to do it, how to take those steps, mm-hmm. how to, you know, continue keeping this house, renting it out, maybe build a shop so we can have some more to stay, but then also going down to Arizona and mm-hmm. doing, living the life that we want to down there. And right. like, who's to say I can't, mm-hmm. like, why can't I? Exactly. And you know, what's really funny mm. when I first got into the online coaching industry and I started seeing people were making like 40 grand a month. Mm -hmm. I told people around here, I was like, I'm going to make 40 grand a month. And they're like, okay. Mm -hmm. And, and then I really realized how much everything is a mindset and how everybody thinks if I'm going to make it big, I got to move to LA or New York. Like if I'm going to make it anywhere, it's going to be there. Like, yes, there's opportunities there, Mm -hmm. but why can't you do it where you are right now? Yeah. Why Mm -hmm. not? Absolutely. It's like the simple, the simpleton mind of like, okay, I live in Marysville, Washington, and probably the average median income is like 78,000. So the thought of somebody making 40,000 of that in one month, they're like, it's not possible. Mm -hmm. (laughs) No. (laughs) What? Like, yeah, that I, I was like thinking when I was hearing this response from people, I'm like, why not? And then get this, my husband, he quit his job. He did do it. Tomorrow's his last day. (gasps) That is so exciting. Uh So he's going full-time entrepreneur. Uh Do you want to know the pushback he got when he told people? Oh, I'm sure. Oh, it was like... You're doing what? Yeah, like really? You're going to give up your corporate And you have a family? I know. Like children? Oh, some guy at his work was like, are you really going to quit right before the recession? And I'm like, this is a projection of their fear. Mm -hmm. They are afraid of, of the unknown. Some people are more okay with risk than others, but you can really tell, like I put on my Instagram story today. I was like, you will see the ultimate projection when Mm -hmm. people, when you tell someone you are quitting corporate America, the whole system that was built for us that we're supposed to go to college for. And then you tell them you're quitting it and going to be a full-time entrepreneur. They're like, (laughs) you're going to crash and burn. And that's the problem because it is their projections because they would never have the confidence to go after something like that because they don't want the risk. Mm -hmm. But that's the problem is if you want the reward, you have to risk some things and you have to go after that. You have to be okay with failing. And I think more people are afraid of the failure than they're afraid of actually doing it. I think if you put people in the position and you told them, hey, you're not going to fail. They'd be like, I would have quit a year ago. Uh huh. But they're so worried about that. And I think that helped me a lot because I was like, well, I could always go back to college. Right. I could always go back and do what I was supposed to do. Yeah. And when I started creating new, like, I don't know, new opportunities for myself. Yes. And it comes back to the mindset because – you're not stuck anywhere you don't want to be. Mm-mm. And of course, people want to be comfortable. They want to be safe. But is that a fulfilling life? Some people, I feel like they just, they need that structure. They need that routine. Right. They need that paycheck. But then there's other people who I know are watching people online that are like k- killing it, crushing mm-hmm. it. And they're like, how? Like, how did you make 40 grand last month? Mm-hmm. You know? And they're like, I want that too. Right. But there's always that fear. Mm-hmm. But the secret is, are you ready? You know the secret. I'm ready. <laughs> if you don't quit, you will be successful. Mm-hmm. Whatever success looks like to you. If that's a $4 million house in Scottsdale, you will be successful. I mean, the only way you can fail is if you quit. Mm -hmm. or you lie and cheat and steal and destroy and do (laughs) satanic things but you know (laughs) but (laughs) don't do that (laughs) yeah Yeah, don't do that but in general you Mm -hmm. are you will literally you can you can do anything that you want as long as you don't quit Mm -hmm. and you will get there and you will figure it out everything the secret is you can figure anything out Mm -hmm. any everything is figure out able Yeah. Just be a problem solver. Use Google. I get so many questions in DMs and sometimes I'm puzzled because I look at them and I just think, you could Google this. This stuff is on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And it's fascinating to me how many people want to go to somebody else for the answer. 
But if you want to be successful, if you want to be successful in your life, in your business, in your relationships, whatever that looks like, you have to be a problem solver and you have to think what is benefiting me the most? How can I, how can I figure this out? All right, I've got this problem. Let's find the solution. And sometimes there's not just one solution. Sometimes there's five solutions and you have to trial and error, figure out what works. Oh, yes. And be okay with crashing and burning and being like, well, that didn't work, Mm -hmm. you know, and then getting back up, but not making, I guess, not really like turning those things that didn't work into a failure. Right. I think that's learning. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you look, if you do something and it massively fails, like for example, Mackenzie and I both created a membership Mm -hmm. and we both are like we are dissolving them Mm -hmm. after a few months right we could easily look at that as like wow we failed like we failed miserably like Mm -hmm. we got all these people in our memberships and then we just were canceling it Mm -hmm. but the lesson that we learned is it's time consuming we have we're a putting a lot of our resources into something that's not really a great return on investment Mm -hmm. of time, especially. Mm -hmm. So that's a learning experience. I I truly feel like if you take the lesson from everything you go through, nothing is a failure. Everything is a lesson. Mm -hmm. You know how people are like, oh, I have no regrets, (laughs) but then still they'll they'll allow themselves to be a failure, like take on the failure. Mm -hmm. I'm a failure identity. Mm -hmm. If you take that same energy of I have no regrets and turn it into everything as a lesson, you're going to go so far and we're excited to see how mm-hmm. you go. Yeah. Well, and I think too, I was listening to a podcast and now I'm reading the book. When you're thinking about your regrets, the podcast I was reading, <laughs> the book I was reading and the podcast I listened to about regret, it was talking about your only if or if only and your at least. So those kinds of regrets. So to put it in perspective, thinking about an Olympian that places third, at least I placed and they're excited and they look at that still kind of hopeful and with that joy. But if you have your second place person, it's if only I worked harder, if only I did this. And so you can sit there and you can ruminate on that if only regret. Mm -hmm. But if you can look at it differently and learn from that and say, next time I know what I need to do, to make sure that I'm going to get first place, to make sure that I'm going to hit those goals that I want to hit, then take that regret and learn from it. It's okay to regret things in your life. It's okay to look at them. But if you sit there and ruminate on them, that's not okay. For you to sit there and complain about them and sit there and not learn anything from it, then it's not doing anything for you. That regret is just that feeling and emotion that isn't going to get you anywhere. And if you can learn from it, you're going to be better off. Mm -hmm. It's like, I feel like if you just sit in regrets, it's like a wasted experience. Mm -hmm. Right? Oh yeah, absolutely. Can you imagine? That's just, it's so hard because I know so many people struggle with this. You know, like I really wish I did not do that thing. Like whatever it may be, I get it. Like shame is such a powerful emotion. But I feel like why we're preaching about looking for the learning experience is because then that really helps combat that shame because at least you got something from it. Mm-hmm. I mean, that could, that, that, that's, a, there's a lot of nuance in that statement, but no, totally. I'm like, got something from it. <laughs> the regret while well, I shoplifted, but at least I got my pack of gum. <laughs> at least I got right? something from it. Yeah. But like you would learn, okay, let's say you shoplifted. I went to jail. At least I learned that I am not going to shoplift again right. because I hate jail food. <laughs> yeah. Did you know I've been to jail? No way. Mm-hmm. For shoplifting? No. <laughs> I was going to say that would be. No. And now that it's like so, uh, I was a juvenile, but I, w- I was in the youth center. But like my mom and I got in a huge fight and then she called the cops on me. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm going to teach you a lesson. Literally what she said. And then the cop was like, no, when you call for DV in Washington State, somebody goes to jail. Yeah. So I stayed the night in the jail. That's terrifying. Well, I can say I've experienced jail. <laughs> but <You> can. <laughs> their biscuits and gravy were pretty good. Really? Yeah. I would not recommend doing something to go to jail to get biscuits and gravy. Like, there are other restaurants. I will buy you biscuits and gravy. <laughs> Some good biscuits and gravy. Yeah. But um, that was definitely, like, an experience that, I, I mean, like... I was really embarrassed by it for mm-hmm. a long time. Oh, I'm sure. You know, because, like, 
I've been to jail. <laughs> I've been to jail. But now it's like I can look back and be like, I've been to jail. Totally. You know, like I can mm-hmm. tell you that I was put in solitary confinement because I couldn't get these piercings out. <gasps> no way. Yeah. Well, now I know I can't get them out because I just yeah. took them out They're for surgery. Okay. But I was in solitary confinement. I don't know why they, they won't let you like have earrings, but they don't. And mm-hmm. they do strip you naked and you have to put on their like striped things. Mm-hmm. I, I have a mugshot somewhere. But right. I went to court afterwards and got it all dropped off my like. Mm-hmm. Like my, your record. Yeah. Because it was like. Mm-hmm. they're like okay she obviously has she's not like a repeat offender she's mm-hmm. not violent mm-hmm. she's like this was just like a, a really shitty situation that right. like we all learn from and <laughs> it's just like a fun experience now that I can I can tell people about mm-hmm. there was Cameron that's our that's our sound guy because we're official we're actually this is should we tell them we can we're actually shooting a show for Hulu <laughs> <laughs> Mac I didn't know where you were going with this and I was like yeah let's do it yep. <laughs> like, yeah. yep it's just a three person three person gig Cameron's just doing all of our content and um, actually that would be a really good pitch okay for like like let's say that this was like a joint podcast mm-hmm. and like we are really trying to like make it big mm-hmm. doing a Hulu show about that someone's gonna steal this idea that's okay. <laughs> I mean, edit I'm, that out. <laughs> unless, unless we're gonna do it first. I'm down. Cheers to new adventures, <laughs> to all the opportunities. Mm. All of them. And then we're gonna start an ASMR YouTube channel. Oh yeah, that would be good. Actually, TikTok. Have you TikTok gone on TikTok AS- at oh night? Oh my gosh, I was. I haven't been on TikTok at night in a long time, and I went last night. And how many live stream of ASMR did I see? Yes, they're like touching the mic. My and mom like, was like, why do people on TikTok go? She's like, why did they do why did they do that? And I was like, oh, ASMR. But it like, could you imagine if someone walked in on you going like, no. to your phone? No, I would be mortified. I would be like, please, like, leave me alone. Let me do my ASMR yeah. in silence. Mom! <laughs> Mom, you got knocked first. Mom, I'm live streaming. Yeah, right. Oh my gosh. It really Wild. have you ever been live and then something like happens where you're like, oh, oh my God, no. Like someone walks in and you're like, shut up. There have been times where like some like I'd be live and someone would walk into the house and I would like choke a little. Not really choke, like I'd keep it going, but you could you could see me start blushing. Like if I don't wear makeup, like I will blush like crazy if I'm embarrassed. Do you have like, or, like red, red cheeks? I have rosacea, so I like start with red cheeks, but you can tell like my whole face will go red if I'm embarrassed. Let's let's so. let's do like uh, wash it off. <laughs> yeah, embarrass me really. Quick. I want to see. <laughs> no, I will. I'll get like so red. Oh my gosh, my my son has really red cheeks when he like mm-hmm. well when he wakes up from a nap. I'm not yeah. sure if he even knows what embarrassment is, right, but yeah. I'm interested to see if he has that too. Maybe. Oh my gosh. So Maybe. does that. It, does that make you more embarrassed when your cheeks get really red when you're embarrassed and like people know you're embarrassed? I feel like it used to. I used to be like mortified if I got embarrassed and my cheeks went red. But now I feel like I'm secure in myself that I can just kind of laugh through it and be like, whatever, these are emotions that I'm feeling. And like, I feel like now I can make fun of myself, mm-hmm. whereas before I like wouldn't want to. Uh-huh. But now it's like I can roll with the joke instead of being like, oh, my feelings are hurt by that. That's a really great way to like really combat, mm-hmm. to, to not be bothered by a lot mm-hmm. of things. Like anytime you're the brunt of the joke, just laugh. Like honestly, just mm-hmm. try to laugh at it instead of being like, <laughs> yeah, what? Well, and for anyone that has siblings, you know, <laughs> you have to do that. Like mm-hmm. I am the butt of every single joke from my brother and sister and I'm the oldest and we always joke that I have the thickest skin. And so they just roast me. Mm. And like, she's thick. And I'm like, C's. you guys are fucking funny. Like, I actually think this is funny. And it's, it cracks me up because if it gets flipped on my brother or my sister, they're both just kind of like, <gasps> what? Like, this is rude. Yeah. You're like, literally being rude. <laughs> like, they can dish it all day, but they don't want to take it. Mm-hmm. And with me, it's like, okay, if, like, we're all laughing and we're getting, like, a laugh out of this, like, it really doesn't hurt my feelings mm-hmm. because I know who I am and I know that they don't look at me that way either. That yeah. it's just 
fun and funny. And if you can start looking at a lot of things like that and realize, mm-hmm. okay, that might be funny for five minutes and it may have hurt a little bit, but tomorrow nobody's going to be thinking about that. Yeah. And like, just same thing. Just don't ruminate on it. It's, yeah. That's hard. I yeah. used to be a ruminator, mm-hmm. like really bad. I'd ruminate on things for months. Mm-hmm. months. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, um, I, I honestly couldn't tell you like what stopped, but mm-hmm. or why, why I, s- no, I'll tell you what the mindset shift was. Mm-hmm. I was, I told myself if somebody is upset with me, like, yeah. Okay. L- let's give some context to this right. conversation. If I said something to Mackenzie that was mm-hmm. like, a mean joke Mm -hmm. or I thought was mean or something I would leave the conversation and think about it for weeks and be like oh my god does she hate me is she mad at me oh my gosh like I shouldn't have said that Mm -hmm. sometimes I would maybe even like text and apologize very people pleaser but then I got to a point where I was like if Mackenzie's mad at me she will let me me. know yeah If, if she's really that upset with me about it she will let me know Mm -hmm. and if she doesn't then she forfeits I guess the right to be mad at me because Mm -hmm. we all need to be able to like express our feelings no matter how hard and uncomfortable it is totally you know like if I said something that really bothered her I'm sure she'd be like that was kind of fucked up Lexi you know but I how many times do we like sit there and we say something and we're like like oh I shouldn't have said that and then we like think about it and we're like no I'm a horrible person now and everybody hates me Mm -hmm. no absolutely when I feel like talking about earlier like that's a that's a regret thing kind Mm -hmm. of that you can look at and think, okay, like I need to let that go because that person's probably not even thinking about it anymore. (laughs) They're probably like, okay, that happened. And, Mm -hmm. and I think it comes down to like the bigger issue there is worrying what other people are thinking of what we've said or who we are or what our choices we're deciding to make Mm -hmm. rather than, you know, just something that you said, but we're constantly thinking about what other people are thinking of us or if something we said hurt their feelings. And it does come down to if they have a problem, it's their responsibility to come to you with that problem to fix it. And you can't sit there and worry about it or think, Oh, does she look at me funny? Like people and not everyone is like this. Not everyone is going to be mature, but you have to get to a point where you're surrounding yourself with people that will come to you and say, Hey, I know it was a joke. It kind of hurt my feelings. I just wanted to get that off my chest because it's going to bother me. And then the other person has the opportunity. Like, you know, if you said something and I said, Hey Lexi, like that actually got to hurt my feelings. And I know you didn't mean anything by it, but it's going to bother me if I don't say that it hurt my feelings. Yes. And then you can sit there and say, Oh my God, I had no idea. I'm Mm -hmm. so sorry. Boom done now I don't done. have to worry I don't have to done. like feel weird for three months because chances are you're not thinking about it anymore or vice right? versa yeah right but it like it mm-hmm. totally is okay like you said yeah. to say hey this hurt my feelings I just need to tell you because it wouldn't feel right with me if I didn't like I just mm-hmm. need to let it off like I'm not mad but I'm just letting you know like that mm-hmm. comment hurt me mm-hmm. and what what's the pain in that no like what I, it's so crazy though how mm-hmm. hard it is for us to be able yeah. to communicate what is bothering us, like yeah. what hurts us. Because mm-hmm. I feel like a lot of us don't know. Right. No, totally. And that could be something too where I could be like, I don't even know why this brought up anything for me. I don't even know why it hurt my feelings. It wouldn't be something that I would normally think would, but like I just got to say something. And I never, ever, those words, you hurt my feelings never would have come out of my mouth because you can't hurt me. You don't have the power over me. You don't have any of this and that and the other. I wouldn't allow myself to even feel those feelings or acknowledge that because I was strong and I didn't, you know, nothing bothered me and I'm the one that's struggling. And so I, if I can let that go and just say those words, it's so much easier to just be like, it is what it is. It's Mm -hmm. okay. And we're moving forward. I think that's the key though. Mm -hmm. to like, most of what we are talking about. Right. I know a lot for the last two years online, they've been saying like, you need to be authentic, authenticity, authenticity. But that's like, we are describing what that looks like. Yeah. Because people have been using that as a buzzword for so long. Like what, mm-hmm. is, what is, what does be authentic even mean? It yeah. means like, if you are feeling hurt and sad, say it, like right. say, I am feeling hurt and sad. Mm-hmm. If you are, if you are somebody who's like very, goofy and weird and it's like (laughs) then like do it yeah you know that that's Mm -hmm. what it is like it's embracing those parts of yourself and not shoving them down as like this is something I should be ashamed of this Mm -hmm. is something that really makes me a weird person like 
then be weird because at least you stand out. Mm -hmm. And by doing that (laughs) and being yourself, you're going to be able to attract the right people to you Mm -hmm. because the more you try to be somebody else, the more you try to be what other people think that you're trying to be, you're not going to attract the right people to your life, Mm -hmm. whether that be in relationships, in business, in whatever you're looking for, because the more yourself you can be and you still might be figuring yourself out i'm still learning myself every single day i I think honestly human humanity is like Mm -hmm. figure i don't think we'll ever know ourselves i don't think we'll ever stop growing i don't Mm -mm. think we'll ever get to a point where we're like (laughs) i've made it (laughs) no yeah well and i think that's something that's amazing because Mm -hmm. i feel like you and i are on the same kind of thought process of that and cameron as well and so many other people that we've surrounded ourselves with is we want to continue to learn and grow. Yeah. Like we, let's become the best version of ourselves. Mm-hmm. Let's become like, like, you yes. know, those people you're like, okay, this is my thing. <laughs> when people had friends for years and years and years, and like, they're mm-hmm. like, Oh, I have, I've been friends with this person since I was two. I'm like, how? Yeah. I'm like, how, how are you like that? But what I've kind of set out to do is like figure out how to be like that. Mm-hmm. Good communication is one yeah. of them. Absolutely. Well, and I think too, not only wanting to become the best version of yourself, but becoming your favorite version of yourself Mm -hmm. because your favorite version of yourself gets to fuck up, but the best version of yourself, you might be a little more harsh on because they're not supposed to make those mistakes. You know better. (laughs) You know better. (laughs) Yeah. And if we can become that favorite version of ourselves, or strive to become that person and Mm -hmm. like make those little steps every single day, it's just... It's what makes this human experience and our day-to-day monotony of life so much better Mm -hmm. because there are so many people. I was listening to someone on my late night TikTok last night, not ASMR, (laughs) and he was talking about every single day is a brand new day Mm -hmm. full of new opportunities, new perspectives, new people you might meet, but so many of us are like, it's Thursday. Yeah. Got to do my same Thursday stuff. That's all it is. It's just a Thursday. It's just another Thursday where I have a packed day <laughs> and I can't even get a moment in for myself. And if we started to look at it differently and say, I have every opportunity literally today right mm-hmm. now to do whatever I want to do, I think a lot of people would start looking at their lives differently and realize I can can do whatever I want to do. I am capable of figuring out what I need to do to get to that next level that I want to be at. Yeah. Like what, what can you do in each moment? But, but here's the, here's the kicker. We're talking about this because we've been through those, these Mm -hmm. waves and these seasons, but when you're in it, it's very uncomfortable and it feels like you're in a trapped box and you have no way out. Because it's the programming we've lived Mm -hmm. in where it's like, it's routine, it's habitual, it's what we were taught when we were younger, it's what we witnessed, it's the people we hung out with, like we have become a version of ourselves, but you can undo it, but the Mm -hmm. undoing is very uncomfortable. Yeah. I mean, like, you'll... The, the way that you grow is through hardship and mm-hmm. people don't like that feeling of uncomfortableness. Right. And that's why we stay where we are because it's comfortable mm-hmm. and it's cozy and it's warm and it's mm-hmm. like, okay, well, listen, I know that I get up every day. I go to work. I might have a bad client, but then I get to go home mm-hmm. and then I get to binge Netflix for three hours and then wake up the next day and do it all again. Maybe this right. weekend I might go to the zoo. Yeah. <laughs> but but you know that's about it but mm-hmm. when you really want to change your life and you want to create this version of yourself that's like I love her I love mm-hmm. this I love what's going on it's those moments where somebody might say something to you that's really triggering and you mm-hmm. might want to sit there and hold on to it and feel justified and be upset with it but that future version of yourself what would they do mm-hmm. that version of yourself that you want to become what would they do Yep. Would they hold on to it or would they let it go? Or mm-hmm. would they say something? But how would they say it? Right. Not just like, you're pissing me off, Mac. <laughs> yeah. You know? Exactly. It would be like mm-hmm. what we talked about earlier about mm-hmm. actually communicating in a way that is effective. Mm-hmm. I think communication, honestly, is the number one skill that people should develop mm-hmm. in life. Like no matter what you're doing in your life, communication is key. Oh my gosh, it's huge. 
Cheers to talking. Cheers. I had a thought thinking about what you were saying to call back thinking about, you know, our programming, Mm -hmm. like your husband quitting his job and Mm -hmm. his coworkers or whoever are saying, oh my gosh, like you're going to do this Mm -hmm. because we have all been programmed to get through high school, graduate high school, go to college, get married, have kids, you know, reach that next promotion at your job Mm -hmm. and live that nine to five life with that family and live in that same thing day to day. And I think that you're right, that unprogramming or that thought process behind looking at the limiting beliefs we have of I have to work a nine to five or I won't be successful. I have to go to college or I won't be successful. No, you won't be. (laughs) (laughs) Got to go to college (laughs) and you got to start birth control at 12. I did. But think about all of these things that we have been told, like as a society, like Mm -hmm. our generation, really what was, what it was is you go through your education mm-hmm. when you're a female and you hit 12 years old, you get on birth control mm-hmm. because that's what's normal. That's right. what's right. Right. And then you go through high school, you do your classes, then you go to college, you put yourself 20, 30, 40, 50 K plus in debt. Mm-hmm. And then you go find a nice cushy corporate job. And then you spend the rest of your life climbing the corporate ladder and hopefully you'll make a hundred thousand dollars by the time you retire. Hopefully. But yeah. Like, am I wrong? No. That's literally. You're living for your two vacations a year, maybe. <laughs> yeah, your two weeks, your two week vacation that you have to ask your boss for. Mm-hmm. Oh, your kid's sick. So you got to make sure you have enough sick time. Otherwise yeah. you'll get penalized. Mm-hmm. And that's, I feel like that's the problem too. And that's the problem with my thinking mm-hmm. is I can be pretty harsh thinking that way and like speaking on that but I don't I'm not in anybody else's shoes I don't know know what it's like because some people do really love like you said they love that structure they love what they have within that job and I think that's amazing if Mm -hmm. you can be excited about that and you can feel fulfilled by that I think that's awesome for me I always felt like I was in the wrong place (laughs) yeah when I was in high school I thought I shouldn't be here Mm -hmm. I'm wasting my time yeah I from a very young age I realized we don't have a lot of time. I've lost a lot of people in my life young. And so I think it gave me that perspective of why the fuck not <laughs> am I doing what I want to do? Because I yeah. saw people not do what they wanted and or end up in different places where they thought they would be somewhere else. And it just comes down to you really do. You have one chance at this human experience and you might as well it's try great. and <laughs> fail and yeah. learn and try and fail and learn again and become that favorite best version of yourself yeah. and do what you want to do. And it's okay if you're content with the nine to five and as long as you're not complacent. Yeah. If you can find a place where you're content and you're happy with what you have and you are grateful and you're in that like grateful energy where you can still see other opportunities or you can still see other things or connections that you can make. But if you're unhappy try it go Mm -hmm. after what you want because you literally have nothing to lose because as morbid as it is we could not be here tomorrow oh my god you know how a year from now you know how many articles there are or people that like i know personally Mm -hmm. to articles i say like when i say articles i mean like breaking news like there was a crash Mm -hmm. you know or like this person died yeah there are so many people that i know personally i can name three off the top of my head Mm -hmm. that retired at, they work to great, healthy living. Mm-hmm. They retire, and then within a year, they're dead. Yeah. Like, why are we waiting until we are 60, 70, where we have arthritis and creaky ankles yes. and cracking mm-hmm. knees to be able to go travel and do the things we want to do and have fun and enjoy our life? Like, why are we waiting for our boss to give us that time off? Like, Again, I completely understand. Like, if you are the kind of person who's like, I love the structure. I love, you know, having a steady income. Like, my job's mm-hmm. very secure and you're you're down with that. Then yeah. I love that for you. Mm-hmm. I really do. But for me, I'm like, I cannot. I can't. I, 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 my goal was to make thir- $100,000 a year by the time I was 30. Mm-hmm. And like, that was my like big goal. Yeah. And I think a lot of people wait. They think I have to do this before I can go after that. 
Yes. And I've had so many coaching clients say, well, I think I need X amount of followers before I do this. Mm -hmm. Well, why do you think that? Mm -hmm. Well, I just think that that's how it should be. Well, who told you that? Uh, and they can't tell me. Yeah. And I say, do it now. There's mm-hmm. literally no reason to wait. And the same goes for everything else. Like sometimes I'll be like, oh, I want to go visit that one friend in this state, but I can't. Why? Why? Why what? not? What? Why? Like take the time <laughs> off. Go do mm-hmm. the things. Like work can wait. And even being a business owner, that's been so hard for me to look at too and yeah. say, wait a minute, I am a person before I'm a business owner and I've blended that into my identity so much that it's been so hard for me to even take an evening off to go to happy hour with friends because I'm worried that the business needs to be worked on at all times or it's not going to succeed. And that's a limiting belief that I had, that I had to say, you know what? I want to set up my business where I can work the least amount of hours, but quality hours Uh so I can live my life in those other hours of time that I have in a day. Yeah. And I've been really doing that the last like three, four, five months. And I'm like, my business is running the exact same And I'm working half the hours that I have been, Mm -hmm. but I'm still getting everything done and taking that stress off myself because that's another thing too. That's Mm -hmm. that perception that I should be doing this. That's a limitation or that's an expectation that I've set up for myself. And the more I started to realize I don't, I actually don't have to do it that way just because I've done it that way for six years, seven years. It doesn't have to stay that way Mm -mm. because that's not the goal. Yeah. And everyone's goals are different and you have to figure out what that is for you. Yeah. And make your life what you want it to be because you have the power to do that. A hundred percent. I I hope if you took anything away from this podcast that it's you have everything within you right now to create the life that you want to create. It's not easy. It's not always fun. It can be really painful at times, especially when you're undoing these things that have been set up for you or leaving these systems that have, we've been told that are the one and the only way. Like as we've seen with birth control and student loans lately, Mm -hmm. like these systems are starting to unravel themselves. So I encourage you to take some time with yourself and think about what you actually want, where you actually want to go, what your goals actually are. Like what is going to make your life fulfilling? Like if you were to die today or sorry, tomorrow, if you were to die tomorrow, would you have had a great time today? Would you have said, you know what? I've lived a full life and you're even only 20, you know, like you can live a full life before you're 80, Mm -hmm. but it's, it's what you do every single day that makes it count. So Mm -hmm. I hope from this podcast, that's what you've learned. That's Mm -hmm. what you're at least going to start thinking about. Like, what do I actually want from my life? Mm -hmm. And how can I take steps to get there? Because nobody's going to hold you accountable. Mm -mm. It's only you. Um, There's other people who are going through the same experience. So you do have a huge community of people who are there to cheer you on and support you and be like, absolutely, you can do this. But it's ultimately up to you to take that first step Mm -hmm. and continue taking the steps, even when you step in the quicksand. Yeah, absolutely. And like you said, it's not going to be easy. There aren't always going to be days that are great. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Saguru, Mm -hmm. but he says something that depressed people, anxious people, and people who are unhappy, their days are so long. Their years are so long. And the people who are seeking quality life and quality experiences Mm -hmm. and want to make an impact their days go by so fast yeah they're like I need more time yes I need more time and I mean I mean I just feel so grateful to have been on this podcast and be able to share a little bit of my experience and kind of my thought process but like Lexi said if you can take one thing from this if you can start to realize that you do have the power to create the life that you want and start looking at things a little bit differently, it's not going to happen overnight. I'm still every single day, every single minute, a work in progress. Yeah. And I think if you look at it, like I can be learning something every single second of every single day Mm -hmm. and just understanding that the work doesn't end. The work never ends. Yeah. And it's just got to be something that you want to be committed to because you want to live that fulfilling, quality, impactful life. And you just got to go for it. Yeah. You just have to go for it. Just baby steps. Take the steps. Do the Mm -hmm. thing. 
shut out the haters, put the blinders on, mute the people who make you feel like shit about yourself. Like, because they don't matter. Yeah, they do not. Your life is your life. Mm -hmm. And the perceptions and opinions of the people outside of your life, like she said, you're the star of your show. You are literally the star. You are the star. Yeah. You are the main character. Mm -hmm. So start acting like it. Start doing the things like, that that you would want to do. Imagine mm-hmm. I was because I'm following the Johnny Depp trial. Are you, oh, have you seen that shit? I just saw something about it yesterday. I was shocked. I know it makes me sad. For I him. know I love him, but it's interesting. Like I think of him in parts of the Caribbean, yeah. right? Could you imagine if he was like, oh fuck, what are the what are the uh-huh. the um, extras going to think about me talking like that? You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Like mm-hmm. he's iconic in that movie because right. he played the part. He, he fully embodied. He, stepped into Mm -hmm. captain jack sparrow Mm -hmm. and was like i'm gonna make this character something beyond what like okay (laughs) i want you to think about this these actors Mm -hmm. they get a piece of paper they read off a script and then it's their job to take this character and make it into life right think about that as your life Mm -hmm. your life already has a script to it like whatever you believe about the universe god i believe in god so i think that he already knows what's going to happen for you. But Mm -hmm. it's up to you to really step into that and make that as powerful as possible with the Mm -hmm. time you have left. And you don't know how much time you have left. Mm -mm. So do it every day. Absolutely. And I think, like you said, maybe write that down. Write down who you want your best and favorite version to be of yourself and start asking yourself, what does this person do every day? Mm -hmm. How does this person respond to inconveniences how does this person respond to that guy cutting me off in traffic Uh what does this person do and just become that person yeah and just start thinking about it differently instead of thinking it's so far off from what you can what you want to be because it's closer than you think well every experience that you have so the next time that dude cuts you off you have an opportunity right there to choose whether you're going to be pissed and go back into that old programming or if you're going to decide, okay, I'm going to breathe instead. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take a deep breath no matter how much I want to. (laughs) We're (laughs) him. But you have a choice. And Mm -hmm. that's that's where it gets really hard because most of the time when you're making those choices to become that person, that better version of yourself, that version you want to become Mm -hmm. is when it's really hard. Yeah. But... It's pra- it takes practice. It's like a habit. You mm-hmm. have to form this habit. Yeah, exactly. And if you start to identify as that new version of yourself, it's going to be a lot easier mm-hmm. than if you're thinking this person is different than who you are. Mm-hmm. And so one thing I do, I can't remember who recommended this, what podcast, what, what, but to write yourself a letter from your future self. Oh. And what? every time I do it, I start crying. And so if you're writing yourself a letter from your future self, so I would write it, you know, a year from now, you're so happy. You've reached these goals. You're, um, you know, comfortable. You're confident. You're whatever those words are for you. And because what's that, what that is doing is it's that's bringing that future person closer to you for you to not feel like it's so far off to feel like it's unattainable. Mm -hmm. And if you can start, thinking about those differently i'm a huge journaler i don't know if anyone else is a huge journaler I hope so journaling helps or like so much those journal prompts i feel like it just really helps me be like wait a minute this is attainable i'm making it way harder than it needs to be uh-huh. it really is simple it is simple when you break it down yeah you into, have to like micro break yes, it down uh-huh exactly into little bits and pieces and start realizing all right, let's do it. Oh, oh, I can do anything. <laughs> because I want. the worst thing that's going to happen is you're going to say, mm, "I didn't like trying on that version of myself." Let's try something different. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. I I think entrepreneurship has helped so much with growing. Right. Because you, I mean, you're really throwing yourself out there. Like you have to continue mm-hmm. throwing yourself out there. Yeah. And seeing what works and what doesn't, and you're forced to continue growing mm-hmm. because if you don't, you're not going to make any money. You're not going to be able to provide for your family. Mm-hmm. You're not going to be able to feed yourself. Like you mm-hmm. really have to like just fucking do it. Yeah. <laughs> and scary. Especially, well, and especially if you want to scale, mm-hmm. like if you want to scale to a place that feels unattainable, you have to put yourself out there. Yeah. And you have to get comfortable doing it. You have to learn who you are and you have to be okay with not a lot of people liking you. Yeah. 
or vice versa. Maybe you have, you know, 80% likes you and 20% doesn't. You have to look at that 20% and say, you know what? This is their projections. And this is shit that I used to deal with Mm -hmm. or shit that other people used to deal with. Like thinking about, I used to be that mean high schooler who was judgmental or whatever. You know what I mean? (laughs) I was a bitch. And like really, truly, it comes down to you just have to do you and you have to understand that not everybody is going to like it. Mm-hmm. and you just have to wash your hands with it and it still sucks it yeah. still hurts sometimes yeah but it gets easier it does yeah it literally is a muscle mm-hmm. like with everything you do when you're changing think about it like you're going to the gym for the first time and you pick up that set of weights you're like ooh, i'm sore this hurts this is very uncomfortable but then the next time you go maybe you like go to sevens and then the next time you go maybe you go to tens and mm-hmm. you're like a little bit better right. that's with everything going live on instagram showing up on your instagram <laughs> stories mm-hmm. uh, communicating with someone when you feel very uncomfortable or hurt by them like everything in life that is going to take you where you want to go and take those next steps on who you want to be. It's literally a muscle. Mm -hmm. I would tell you, give it five times, try something five times before you quit Mm -hmm. five different times, five different ways before you quit. Don't do something the same way once and then be like, well, it didn't work for me. Try it five different ways and then come and tell me Mm -hmm. that it's not going to work for you. And then try something else Mm -hmm. five different times. And I think to your point too, with that, there's been so many coaches that I've worked with or so many coaching clients that have worked with me Mm -hmm. that I've said, I can speak from my experience. I can tell you what I did, but you have to find your own path. Yes. I can give you the blueprint and you might say, "Mm, I'm going to take rid of that and get rid of that. Uh But I like this part of that because ultimately like there is no right way to get from A to B. There's going to be thousands of ways to get from A to B. Thousands. And you have to find your path, what works for you. And you have to start becoming that problem solver and that Mm -hmm. free thinker. And you can't say, oh, well, so-and-so did it this way. So I have to do it that way. You don't. Yeah. Just because someone has what do they know? (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Honestly. (laughs) Yes. Everybody's, nobody. Okay. This is like, I want to make this the last parting thing because I think we're running short on time. Mm -hmm. But nobody has it figured out. Not even one person on this planet has Mm -hmm. it figured out. Nope. Everybody is just doing things. Some things work for other people. Some things don't. So you have to go and continue trying and continue failing Mm -hmm. and continue looking like a fool with your pants on the (laughs) ground. (laughs) And it's going to happen for you if you stay consistent and you give yourself grace. Grace. Mm -hmm. Yep. Exactly. Thank you so much. Thank how you can, so much for having me. How, oh can, how can people find you and where can they work with you? Pretty much Instagram is where I hang out most of my days. I'm at Maclash Mob currently. Um, what are you going to change it to though? I know. I wanted. I will probably just change it to Mackenzie Graham with an E. Extra E, my middle initial. Mackenzie. Um, there is Mac.gram available. I like that as well to keep like the Mac in there. But for now, I'll be Maclash Mob. I'll probably keep that and then direct people to the new one. But hurry, follow. <laughs> hurry, hurry, follower. But yeah, that's pretty much where I hang out. And um, how can they work with you? Oh, I have in person lash training and I offer online virtual coaching for pretty much right now women in the beauty industry who want to take their businesses to the next level. But ultimately I'd love to open that up to work with people on their mindset, whether that be in their personal life, in whatever business venture they have outside of the beauty world. Um, But yeah, she's a speaker and she's influential and she is a mindset expert and she genuinely wants to see everybody succeed. So she's somebody you definitely want in your circle of influence. Thank you so much for coming on. This was super fun. I know. Yeah, I I feel like we need to do another one where we're just like we're shooting the shit the whole time. Like we (laughs) really went deep with mindset. But I think if we did one also where we're like playing a game. Oh, that would send be fun. me an email, Alexi at upwestsocial.com with different games, and then we're going to schedule another mm. podcast for me and Mac to play. That would be really fun. Oh, thank you I'm so in. much. This is fun. Oh, bye. <laughs>